All right, guys, thanks for joining me on Centennial Customs. Bit of a different video here. We're not working on the 54 build. I'm actually going to be building a tool so I can work on the 54 build. This is my uh, super cheap Princess Auto equivalent to Harbor Freight bead roller, and you got to do it by the hand crank. So we're going to motorize it today so I could do it with a foot pedal and just do it all myself. All right, first things first, I bought an Amazon replacement winch motor. It's just the motor itself, it didn't come with a kit. I bought this speed controller and a uh, 110 volt to 12 volt power inverter, foot pedal switch, and then just electrical box to store all this stuff in. I'm gonna be the first to say it, I'm not the first one to do this. I am following off another YouTube video, but let's see how this one turns out. First things first, I wanna make sure I could actually get this thing wired correctly. So this is just a uh, cord. I cut off a, a freezer as a book to throw out. So we're gonna hook that into our power inverter. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Ground into ground, neutral into neutral, live into live. And then uh, now we're gonna go from this output into this 12 volt speed controller. So this will give me, well, speed control and forward and reverse. So it's going to go into the controller, then from the controller into the winch. Or sorry, controller, pedal, winch. Okay, I got this whole thing wired up here. Let's see if it makes sense of it. So I got my power, wall, power wire from the wall going into the inverter. I got my positive coming out of the inverter. Coming out of the inverter into the, the speed controller. And then I got my negative out of the inverter into the speed controller. I have my negative out of my speed controller going all the way down along this red wire to my switch. And then from my switch, I have it coming in under the normally open. And then I have it going out on the common to the negative of the winch motor. And then the positive of the winch motor just goes straight to the positive of the speed controller. So now, let's get this set up here. My inverter is on. I got power here. This tells me my speed, I believe. So if I turn my knob, yeah, 0% to 100%. And then this will switch my direction. So now let's put this lower. Let's start at 15%. If you can tell by that motor is spinning. Turn it up to, let's go big, let's go 100%. Oh yeah, she's got more power. Switch direction, perfect, we got forward and reverse, switch is all working. Now we're gonna try to mount this stuff into this box here, make it look all pretty. And then we'll try mounting this to the bead roller. Okay, so I took my winch and because I just bought a replacement motor, it didn't come with a coupler and everything. So what I did is I welded a nut onto the end there, and my coupler idea is to take the nut with a socket. And the plan is to weld the socket to the bead roller, and then if I ever need to take the motor out, I can just line up the nut and socket, and she'll be back on and coupled together. So before I do this part, I need to brace this up more because one of the biggest issues using this is all the deflection in the bead roller itself and then plus the stand that I just took out of the scrap steel bin at work. So I'm going to add some bracing to this first and then we'll get into mounting this winch motor.
Oh yeah, I got it all together here. Uh, socket welded to there, all coupled together. Some extra bracing, got the box mounted. I just gotta put the lid on the box. Hang on here. I'm having issues with my uh, speed controller. I don't know exactly what's going on yet. I had it working for the first little bit and I had this light up and it said like whatever, 100% and then turn it down, 30%. It's working in forwards right now. I'm gonna warn you, this thing's like an absolute death trap right now. Like the speeder controller is not working at all. It says 100% on and it doesn't work in reverse right now. Plus the beater roller is really jamming up on itself. I got some figuring out to do here. What the hell? All right guys, it's a new day. I found some answers here. Uh, first thing, the winch binding. 100% my fault. Um, what I didn't do was tighten the set screw on the dies. So you can see that one's just ramped and uh, it was just riding on it. So every time I hit it, it would bind. My bad. Second problem would be the winch spinning way too fast. Once again, my fault. This winch that has zero labels on it, um, I did not read the fine print. And I actually had two in my cart, and uh, this one, and a smaller one. And instead of reading the fine print when I checked out, I deleted the wrong one and ordered a 4,500 pound winch. So that explains why this thing spins so fast and is like a death trap. So, also explains my third issue that speed controller is rated for 60 amps. This thing at full throttle puts together almost 200 amps. So that would be why I have no more speed output because that uh, whole resistance in there is gone. So luckily I uh, emailed the speed controller company and explained what happened. They didn't really seem to care honestly, but they sent out a new one which showed up today. So that is awesome. I went to my local Princess Auto here and I bought a 2000 pound winch. I already kind of plugged this in just to see and it already is slower. so. I'm happy with that. Um, means a new drive lug. I'll have to weld a nut onto this new drive lug. Stick that in and then mount this to the bracket over here. It's going to take a little bit of uh, figuring out because I already fully welded this to my base. So I got to uh, build some spacers or whatever, but we'll make it work. And then fingers crossed that hopefully this thing isn't a death trap and actually works. So all my fault. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. If you're new to the channel, uh, I'm not shy about my, my, my mistakes. I make them all the time. It's part of learning and figuring it out. So let's, uh, let's get this together and see if we're right this time. So I thought I'd show you this tip here. I'm just uh, working on drilling out the new holes on the winch plate to mount these. I got my first hole drilled. Pretty simple trick, take a p any piece of tape you got, poke your holes through, and then you can transfer that onto your bracket and you have your exact dimensions and everything, the exact width. So I drilled this hole here, I'll line up this hole here, stick the tape there and I drill where my next mark is. Boom, simple. Okay, got uh, the winch mounted, drive lug welded, everything. Added just a couple nuts and washers for a spacer. I haven't replaced the uh, rheostat or whatever you want to call the speed controller, but uh, you can see already that this thing is already at a lot better controlled speed. Uh, we're gonna swap that speed controller out and uh, hopefully we have speed control again 
and then we should be should be good to test. Okay, my last two mods here is I welded this uh, T handle to the bolt to add the pressure down, and then I also drilled a hole through this bracket into this block, and then I tapped the block with a tap and die set, and drilled the uh, upper one a little bit bigger. Put just a 10 mil through there and just a spring I had from like a old e-brake system or whatever. Any spring will do. So now it comes up on its own. I don't have to force it up when I release the, release the tension. So that being said, let's plug her in and see if it works. All right, we're plugged in. That lit up. That's a good sign. See if I could show you that. That's that's at zero. Turn the dial. Oh yeah, I think we're back. 100%. 100% should be too much amps. Um, so I'm definitely not going to go that much because I know I know what I'm at now. So zero. Let's set the set you up here. Zero. Nothing should happen, and it doesn't. See about 10, 10% 10 nothing. Oh, 20%'s trying. It's hardly moving. 30%. That's actually not bad. It's slow. 40. That's. I'm. 40's not bad. Let's maybe we'll give 40 a try. Okay, scrap piece of steel. Just got a random line drawn out here. All right, so there we have some, there's where it touches. So let's go one full turn. Let's go tight. Let's make it pretty tight. There's two full turns. Let's see what happens here. I mean, we're bead rolling. Oh, what's going on here? My spring doesn't want to bring it up. Oh, that's a little tight. All right, so now my spring brings it back up, release my piece. You can see here, I got a small crease. I don't think that was tight enough, and I also think that was a little slow. So let's put it back in. Let's go over the same spot. Go down so it touches I should have put a starting point on it but it really doesn't matter we're just testing so touches let's do that was one let's do two let's try two and a half and then let's try at 50 percent speed piece comes up, releases, that we even got a, a bigger dimple die now, or dimple die, we got a bigger bead on there. I'm super happy with this. Let's try some more things, let's try some curves. See if it bogs down on the curves. So we'll go one, two, go about two and a half again. Finish it up, give it a really quick coat of paint. You can see I welded some uh, studs on there just to hold the extra dies. And of course threw that Centennial Custom sticker on there. Final product, very happy with the way it turned out. So let's, uh, let's make some beads.
Okay, this wraps up the bead roller video. Uh, it works awesome. I was just doing some panels on the 54. Um, we will be back on the 54. Next video, I promise, we're working on the bed floor and I needed the bead roller for this. So building things yourself, you know, saves you a bunch of money, takes a little bit of time. Sometimes you have to buy two inches and it takes a little bit of figuring out, but it's all part of the game. Um, if you hit like, subscribe. Thanks guys.